Hello and welcome. I want to give you a quick preview of what you might expect in our Metalsmithing 200 series. It's great fun. If you took the 100, then you'll be ready to do the 200 to take your skills to the next level. So first of all, we have some great projects. So some of the projects that we're going to do will be the pedestal prong. You can see this one here with the carnelian material and every piece of this is made with one piece of wire. We attach our prongs to the base and we can do it at different sizes. We also have the uh, riveting projects. Now these riveting projects are very interesting. They can be a combination of different metals. We can even combine textures with the metals. Um, sometimes the rivets are visible, so they're decorative. Down here I also have a rivet, but you can't see it. So we sometimes have functional rivets. And with rivets, there are lots of things you can do. You can have movable, uh, movable sections in the, the pieces. So you can do some very exciting things. So just either decorational, and then here we have a staple, which is another way to um, attach parts together without having to heat them up. Now, um, all the designs are basically you decide which designs you want to do yourself. We also do filigree work. This is what the filigree work looks like, a very ancient design. You can do twisting of wires, wrapping of wires, shaping of wires within a frame. You can also add tiny little beads. You'll see this one has some granulation on it. And then eventually you can do very fine and intricate work like this Russian filigree right here. And then finally, we will do granulation techniques. Now, when we start with granulation, it's just understanding how to fuse the little balls, how to make the little balls and how to fuse the little balls onto the silver. Afterwards, we clean that up and then you can start to create beautiful projects that you see like this or like this. Or how about this lovely project that is done by one of our graduates and is now selling in the CJS. And if you look later, you can do some really beautiful pieces like these beads that have uh, thousands of small, small beads. That's the true granulation as it was done by the Etruscans. So lots of intricate projects. And remember that when you take those projects to the next level, it means that all the ones we did in level one will be very, very simple, much easier for you to do. Now, one of the benefits is that we have tons of new tools and the tools are also very, very useful. You're going to get your very own nice, solid mandrel. So this mandrel, of course, what's it for? Well, there's a lot of uses that it has, but one of the main uses is to put your rings onto the mandrel. You will also get the rawhide hammer. The rawhide hammer is to make sure you form and shape the, the anything you like, but when you form and shape it with this tool, it doesn't ruin the surface of the tool. It doesn't displace the metal. It just helps the shaping of the metal. You also have another smaller hammer. This is your riveting hammer. And this is very specific for riveting because we have to be gentle. We have to be very delicate when we rivet. So you've got the two different surfaces, one flat, one round, so that you can do different types of riveting. We also have some measuring tools and our measuring tools would be the divider and also the, um, the gauge, the gauge which can measure your wires and also your, um, your metals. So if I were to take a wire, you have to see what the gauge is by putting it through the hole in this direction, not by poking it through the hole. So this tells me it's a 1.83, or if I turn it around, you can see that this is actually a uh, 15 gauge wire. And if I'm measuring sheet, I would also do the same thing. I would bring my sheet through like this to be able to then properly measure the sheet to be able to see if I can cut it with my scissors or not. And of course, this one here, the divider, is when we want to scribe the lines down because if you want to keep nice straight surfaces, it's really useful to have this tool. 
So this measures, it scribes straight, straight lines, it also does circles for you on your metals. We have, additionally, the jeweler's snip. Now the jeweler's snip is something that you probably all need because you're going to be cutting your solder. So it's an excellent tool for that. But if you roll out your metals and your sheet metal until they're about a 22 gauge, this tool actually cuts it. So you don't really need to have a big, massive, expensive cutter for your metals. You can do it with this. You can save yourself time from sawing if you have the right size. We also have a set for um, setting stones. Now, previously we learned how to bezel set. These tools, especially the bezel pusher, and the bezel roller. These tools here are great for bezel setting. It'll help you do your bezel setting even faster than we learned before. We also have, of course, a prong pusher. You see the difference. It has this tiny little groove in it, and this helps to grab against the, the, um, the prong. Let me show you a prong here. It helps to grab against the prong uh, without sliding backwards and forwards. So, it's a really good and useful tool to do setting of prongs. And then we have within that same set a burnisher and that burnisher is very smooth. And what it does is it really presses the metal, it compresses it and shines it so that we get a very, very good finish. Another tool that helps us to clean up and shine would be this one here. This one has, it's like a very fine sandpaper and if I were to make any small marks, I can always come over with this one and I can remove those small scratches or the small marks with this tool here, which is very, very helpful. And finally, let's not forget a couple more things. We've got our tripod. Now the tripod was extremely useful. You saw how it worked in our Metalsmithing 100. And what did we do with the tripod when we attach our bezels to the bases, we want to make sure that we heat from the bottom. And so that is what we do also when we do our filigree techniques, because if we heat it up from the bottom, then it allows us to, um, to apply heat without burning um, the finer and more delicate wires. So we use that for our filigree and of course we also use it for our granulation techniques as well, where we have to do fusing. So we have many different metals too. We are using brass, which we didn't use in the 100. We are using the Argentium silver, which is the 935. We are using all kinds of twisting and um, uh, twisting techniques to create the small wires for the filigree. We have small uh, heads and bezels, which we are going to be incorporating to use for the small stones that we are going to apply and add to our designs. And then we also, of course, have these beautiful large um, carnelians for the pedestal prong projects. So there's a lot more materials. Uh, I forgot one, the third hand. Very, very useful for holding things that are hot so that you don't have to hold them with your hands or a tweezer. This is a tool that will actually hold um, uh, your pieces in place so that you can do proper soldering. So with that, we are very excited to run the Metalsmithing 200 and everyone who's done it so far has had a lot of fun and they have increased their skills and they are creating some beautiful pieces and we are seeing more and more of the pieces being uh, shown and sold in the Creative Jewelry Studio. So we hope you'll join us for the fun.